Welcome to Mother Daughter Projects. I'm Vicki and I'm by myself because I did this particular DIY by myself. Now this DIY may seem just a little bit off brand, but it does involve a power tool and a can do do it yourself attitude. This summer I brought out this sewing machine. This was my mom's and she purchased it in 1960. So that was a lot of years ago. I learned to sew on it and so did my two sisters. Well, this summer I had my grandkids here and they wanted to learn to sew. So I decided to get this machine out and let them sew on it. So a third generation can learn on this very, very old, very, very cool machine. Now everything was going really well. It did a really nice straight stitch and I decided I would try to zigzag on it. Well, I went to do that and it wouldn't work. So I decided to set it aside and see if I can figure out what was wrong with it a little bit later. So this is how I went and fixed this machine all by myself. I'm feeling very, very satisfied and very, very accomplished that I was able to do this, take something that was really destined for the trash, it wasn't working, and make it work brand new again. So come along as I show you how I did this. I figured there must be a video out there addressing the problem. So after a quick search, I found what I needed. After watching the video a few times, I was willing to tackle the problem. So here goes. The first step is to take off the top of the machine. By removing a couple of screws and this twist off knob, the entire top comes off revealing the innards of this machine. In the video, I watched the narrator go into a lot of detail about this machine. I will put a link in the description to it. These parts are the ones that control the two switch selectors. To get them working, you'll need a high quality sewing machine oil, Use a sewing machine oil and not a household oil like 3-in-1 and possibly a hairdryer. I ended up using a WD-40 specialist spray. Basically, you'll put oil on these parts and start moving the selector knobs until the parts start moving freely. This rod started moving fairly soon after working on it. Once it does, look on the back side of the machine and add oil here as well. These other two parts took way more time. In the video I watched, he says he used medium heat from a hairdryer to help soften the old crusted oil, which was basically acting like a glue to keep these parts frozen. This did not work, so I moved on to using that WD-40 specialist spray, and I just walked away to let it work. Periodically, over the course of a weekend, I'd come back and try to turn the knob some more. On the second day, I felt the slightest movement in the inner knob. I sprayed some more WD-40 specialist, continued to move the knob, and heard the angels sing as a part started moving. I continued to add more oil and move the part until it was moving smoothly. Back to that other part. On the third day, after more spray and more heat, this one too broke free of the old gunk. There is still a bit of hesitation in this one, but it works. Now it was time to clean up those puddles of oil in the machine. I use a variety of techniques, including attaching these facial blotting papers onto a pair of locking medical clamps, which made it very easy to reach into the depths of the top of this machine. I also used paper towels and t-shirt rags. At some point, I decided to protect my work surface with a puppy pad and simply tipped the machine over to let the oil drain out the top. Duh. With the machine in that position, it presented yet another opportunity to clean the bottom. I took the thumb screw and washer off the drain pan and removed it. The actual bottom of the machine looked really good with the exception of the gears, which were covered in decades old grease. This black felt like thing was gross. These old machines smell of oil and grease and this felt pad is probably the biggest contributor to that smell. Back in the video, I learned that this part can be cleaned with a 50-50 solution of crud cutter, rinsed in the sink and then allowed to air dry. I did all that and you can see how much gunk washed out of it. I laid it in the sun until dry, but as you can see, it was still dirty, but not really as smelly. Now, one of the questions I wanted an answer for was, can this felt like material be replaced? More Google research and I found someone replacing it with craft felt. I wasn't ready to do that, but while the part was out, I traced the felt just in case I want to put a new one in in the future. Once the oil finished draining, I decided to do a bit more cleaning. I washed the lid and the light cover as well as a couple of chrome guides that were easy to take off. Be sure you put something in that sink to keep those tiny screws from falling down the drain. I unscrewed the different plates to clean behind them with no issues. I also took care of a bit of rust I found on the machine. I used a bit of evapo rust painted on with a small paintbrush until it disappeared. I did this on several areas of the machine. Be warned, don't use any rust remover on painted surfaces as it will harm the finish. Use a little at a time and work slowly. I cleaned up the body of the machine with water and a magic eraser. Again, work gently, this is an old machine. By tearing off a bit of the magic eraser and putting it onto the clamp, I was able to clean smaller areas of the machine. 
When it came to cleaning the flywheel, I was caught off guard by a flood of emotions. It was hard for me to clean off decades of use, which included the fingerprints of my late mom, as well as my siblings and myself. I allowed myself time to take in the moment before cleaning it so that it will now take on the fingerprints of my grandchildren. Before replacing the bottom oil pan cover, I greased the gears and oiled in all the places as specified in the owner's manual. I did the same thing to the top, but after I put the head cover back on as there are holes in the top where the oil goes. Lastly, I oiled the front, which in retrospect I should have done before the cover went on. The very last thing to do was to replace the stitch cover, which was the most difficult thing to do. I finally found the information I needed in the owner's manual. I'll demonstrate here how to put it back on to save you the frustration. And before you do any sewing, you'll need to run the machine to get the new oil and grease moving through the parts as well as to allow any excess oil to exit the machine. A scrap piece of fabric run through without thread in the machine works well. Because I kept seeing oil dripping off the machine, I changed the paper so I could better see if the oil was still dripping. After it appeared that the oil had finished dripping, I threaded the machine and stitched away on fabric and paper. You'll probably need to throw away the thread in the bobbin if, if it has gotten oily from the bottom case. That's it! A repair of that led to a semi-thorough cleaning and oiling of this vintage machine. What we learned. The first thing, I, I wish I had done it, but I was in such a hurry to go ahead and get started was to wear a mask. These old machines can have some hazardous materials in them. Some of the old machines I found to have lead paint and this one is chipped. Uh, I don't know that this has any lead paint, but I did err on the side of caution and wash my hands frequently. Now you didn't see it in the video, but I did start trying to unstick those parts with machine oil, sew machine oil, and it didn't work. So I moved quickly onto this WD-40 spray, which actually did work very, very well. It took time, but it worked. So if I was to do this again, I would start actually with the WD-40 and just let that work. Now I had nothing to lose in taking this machine apart and working on it. So don't be afraid to, if you have something that's important to you and it doesn't work and you would like it to, you know, look at some YouTube videos and just get in there and see if you can make it work. So just, just do it. If you like this video, and I hope you did because I really, really enjoyed doing it, you can like and subscribe and you can get notification of all of our new videos. And as a bonus, you can subscribe to our newsletter where you get some behind the scenes of mother daughter projects. And it's a little more personal than it is on videos. So thank you for joining us and we'll see you next time. Bye.